On a show like this, when we usually deal with issues of affecting minorities and civil rights and disadvantaged, some of the audience obviously would think it's far-fetched for them to be thinking about art, art history and, and culture when they have to deal with uh, next week's paycheck and live from day to day. How do you explain art to a larger segment of the population that obviously will not have the time or the funds to think about purchasing a painting? In the particular case of David Driscoll, an artist of color, especially of his generation, they were faced with a number of issues that were so prominent in their everyday living and how they saw themselves as individuals that art was a means by which they could speak of it. Now, if you are coming from an impoverished background and a background where you have no political power, if you're going to make art, art is more not for art's sake, aesthetic principles, but for art for one's own sake or one's own community, documenting individuals in the community that should be honored because they're not being honored. What are some of the highlights of black American contributions to the world's art? Well, I like to think of this as a very important question in many areas. If one limits it to the visual arts, I think you would find that contrary to popular opinion, the black American has contributed not only in painting and sculpture and ceramics, but he's also contributed in the fields of the domestic arts, such as architecture, crafts, the uh, metalsmithing and what have you. What in the future do you believe uh, will dictate what will influence and, and be responsible for what ultimately black artists are uh, okay. responding to? I do believe that there will never be the so-called melting pot attitude of the meshing in American culture, which will eradicate the need for ethnic identification and ethnic heritage. Because I think this is one of our strengths. We all want to be equal, yes, but we don't want the notion that when one sees a black subject, it will be amazement and astonishment. I think you will always have the need uh, within the community for black subjects, for people to show their heritage, their history. I think that in today's culture, it became even more important that we will address his contribution and that we will study African-American art. Because when you look at identity, we are looking at where we came from, what we learn from our parents and grandparents and what we learn in school, what we are bringing to today's conversation. So we have better understanding the life of each other, the background of each other, the history of different culture and so on. Where are you personally heading in your expression of your own philosophy in the arts? Well, that's probably the most difficult of all the questions <laughs> you've asked because one finds it awfully difficult to really articulate clearly what it is that he's trying to do in his own work. But I suppose as close as I could say to it is an attempt to reaffirm my own creative spirit by having a world perspective on art and at the same time also trying to localize certain aspects of my own art. And by localizing, I mean actually turn into African themes and things of that nature to reflect the experiences that I've had. And so this means that my work very often uh, is based in symbols that reflect African culture or Afro-American culture. It began very early and that he encountered social and cultural discrimination as a young black man in the South. Father was a sharecropper, preacher. So in the privacy of his own home and family, he was David Clyde Driscoll. But when he came into the public space, it was just another young black boy. David encountered a world that was evaluating him differently, was questioning his values, his intelligence, his capabilities that suggested by virtue of being black, 
he was less than. No one has to tell you. All you have to do is do the math, so to speak. What David made a concerted effort through his entire life, I believe, addressing that dynamic, asserting that there is beauty that could be made in the human spirit. So he didn't just make work about documenting African-American life, like Behold Thy Son, the Emmett Till piece that he was inspired to make. But he also made work about pine trees and beauty and love and affection. So he was showing this full dimension of a human. Art has an important role to play in everybody's life. They may not know it in the sense of the academic tradition. They may not have gone to college or they may not go to the museums, but the mere fact that we live in homes, we have furniture in our homes, we have dishes on our tables, we drive automobiles, all of these things were designed and in many cases made by artists, artists of varying degrees. And so when we talk about economics, when we talk about politics, when we talk about social situation, we're talking about a design within society. And the artist is always at the core of design in society. That's what the artist is about, giving a new vision, giving us that which we would not have without his or her presence. And so, to a great extent, art remains essential in the sense of whatever this vision is, it is the artist who gives it in writing, or gives it in sound, or gives it in the motive aspects of dance, or through color and form, or through the aspiring words of the poet. And in order for us to have a better life, regardless to whether it's, we're talking about racial problems, we're talking about socioeconomic problems, or cultural problems in general, we must eventually go back to lifestyling. And the artist dedicates his life to enhancing the quality of life in his community, and that's what art is about in general.